Greetings everyone, this is David the Real Matt White with a new microphone and a better audio quality. In this video, we are going to be covering six things that the Roman Catholics get wrong about orthodoxy. I will be covering arguments that i personally seen online that is a complete misrepresentation of the orthodox position. And so this video is going to be uh, busting those myths. So the first, this is one of the more popular ones, is that we are somehow unable to settle theological issues unless we have a really, really ecumenical council because we don't have the Pope. Um, this, this is actually an argument that Benedict Ratzinger used. He said that the Orthodox believe that theological issues can only be settled with a really ecumenical council. That is completely wrong. The uh, Council of Black Carne, for example, uh, it's not an ecumenical council. But nevertheless... The teachings in the Council of Black Carne regarding the filioque are dogmatic, and there are cer certain teachings in Black Carne that is distinct from what other ecumenical councils teach. And we need to understand what ecumenical council even is. We, when we're speaking of ecumenical council, most people have a Western understanding of what an ecumenical council is, more like a papal understanding of it. Ecumenical council means imperial council. It's a council called on by an, by an emperor. The first seven ecumenical councils and nine, which there, you know, there's more than seven ecumenical councils, but the, the ecumenical councils that Roman Catholic Church agrees with, they're all called and presided by emperors. Now, this does not mean that every single council called on by an emperor is an ecumenical council. One example will be the Second Council of Ephesus, which is a robber council. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that a, an ecumenical council is an imperial council, so that's why we don't even have ecumenical councils anymore in the first place. There is no empire. The imperium is gone. But to to elucidate on my point regarding more than seven ecumenical councils, we, we you could argue we consider that uh, the Photian Council in 879 and the, the Hesychast Synods are also imperial councils, just like the first seven ecumenical councils. And Ultimately, the way we can settle theological issues is the exact same way that the Roman Catholic Church sells theological issues, uh, including the set of Acantes, and that is reception theory. Now, I'm not going to go too into it, too much into it. I already made a video regarding receptionism, so you can go check that out. But basically, one thing I want to highlight is that many uh, Francis apologists, when they argue for pr Francis being a legitimate pope, they say that ultimately speaking, the way we know Francis is a true Pope, we know that he's a true Pope because he's accepted by the Roman Catholic Church, by the clergy and the laity, and he was elected by the cardinals. That is receptionism. We're not the only ones that believe in this. You also believe in it. So the way we can know uh, dogmatic teachings is that, well, we will both agree that uh, the church is infallible. And so the councils that are received and accepted by the church are uh, just as dogmatic as a communical council. Again, the Council of Black Carne is just as dogmatic as uh, the First Council of Ephesus and so on and so forth. So because they were received by the church and because the church teaches those doctrines in those councils, we can know that those theological teachings are infallible. And similarly, people will claim that we don't have unified doctrine. That's because, oh, you had a Greek Orthodox Church, you had the Russian Orthodox Church, so you have like two different churches, and surely you believe in different things. Actually, that's completely wrong. All of the Orthodox churches, uh, and I'm not talking by name, all of the churches that are in Orthodox communion, whether it's Greek, Russian, Serbian, Bulgarian, Antiochian, whatever, we share the same exact faith and exact theology. Now, you can't say the same thing for the Roman Catholic Church because they have the Uniates. Uh, but the way we can understand that we have unified doctrine, this is expressed through the Eucharist. The Eucharist is theological unity. That is how we have theological unity. We don't share the Eucharist with people of different theologies because they have different theologies. It's as simple as that. Number three, you Orthodox think that uh, the Pope is first among equals, so you think that the Pope is just another bishop. That's not exactly correct. Many Orthodox themselves actually make this uh, misunderstanding. The way we understand the Pope is that the Pope has primacy. 
but there is a distinction between primacy, papal primacy, and papal supremacy. And the Roman Pope did enjoy privileges that the other bishops did not have. One of them was right to retrial. You can check out the third and the fifth canons, uh, the canons between third and the fifth canons of Council of Sardica, and that, the, that he was the public representation of the church. What do I mean by that? Well, if I ask in the sixth century where the Christian church was, what's the, what's the sign of the Christian church? Uh, the Roman church will be shown to me. That doesn't mean that the church next door is not a Christian church. That just say, that just means that the Roman church was a sign of visible unity. Well, now, uh, that doesn't mean that we don't have a visible unity anymore. The, the Eucharist is still a form of visible unity of the church. And what I want to add is uh, St. Cyprian's view of Matthew 16, 18. And uh, there's going to be a great thread in the description below to the thread that explains St. Cyprian's view of Matthew 16, 18. Now, for St. Cyprian, Peter is the rock. He, he is the rock. But the way he understands it is completely different than how Roman Catholics understand it. For St. Cyprian, Peter is a type of all bishops. So when, when he's speaking of Peter's seat... He's speaking of the office of the episcopate, not just the papacy. Right? So all bishops hold the office of Peter. All bishops are basically Peter. And this view is not only St. Cyprian's personal opinion. Uh, this is a view shared by St. Augustine. So St. Augustine in Retractions, he also says that... Uh, he also says that all bishops are Peter. All of the bishops are Peter. So this is a this is a common view in the early church, not just a fringe view in in the Orthodox Church. This is one of the more infuriating ones, uh, infuriating misunderstandings regarding Orthodox teaching on the filioque, right? And the Roman Catholics think that because we reject the filioque, that means that we divide the Holy Spirit and the Son, and they use nonsense arguments like, oh, John 20, 22, you know, Jesus breathes on the apostles, the Holy Spirit on the apostles. That proves double processions, procession, orto, bro. No, that's a complete misunderstanding of what we teach. The filioque controversy, in a, simple, in a simple manner, the whole controversy, it's not really that complex. The controversy about, is about hypostatic origin of the Holy Spirit. So the Orthodox view is that the Holy Spirit gets his existence from the Father alone, period. That is the Orthodox position in the Creed. The Roman Catholic position, the way it differs, is that the Holy Spirit gets his existence, gets his hypostatic origin from the Father and the Son as a single principle. This is not the Orthodox view. And so we do have a different view as some people say, oh, you, bo you both teach the same thing. No, we don't teach the same thing. We have different views on the filioque. And this is the orthodox view on the filioque. So when there is a procession going on, as I, as I mentioned before, John 20, 22, it is completely legitimate because the Son eternally manifests the Holy Spirit as Council of Blackerne handles that sort of a dispute. And St. Gregory Palamas himself he says that the, that the Holy Spirit has the Father as foundation, source, and cause, but the Holy Spirit reposes in the Son and is sent, that is manifested, through the Son. So again, this is, this is the Orthodox view of the filioque. So there's an economic procession and the Holy, and the Holy Spirit manifested, uh, the, the Son eternally manifests the Holy Spirit. This is the orthodox view of the filioque, not the straw man, oh, there's a division between the Holy Spirit and the Son. No, that, that's not the orthodox view at all. No one holds that view. No one. Zero. This is one of the more weird uh, matter of facts. I see this, I see Roman Catholics use this, use this as a matter of fact statement and they say that we're too mystical and we're like anti-rational or like we don't like rationality. We hate ration. No. What we don't like is Western rationality. We don't have any problem with being rational. The best example is St. Gregory Palamas himself. Yes, he is a mystic in, in some sense, but uh, St. Gregory Palamas, while being very spiritual, was also very rational. He constantly debated people and argued with people and made theological debates. So... <laughs> 
we don't have any problem with scholasticism. We have a problem with Western scholasticism. The, the, the fact that many Orthodox theologians and saints both emphasize rationality and mysticism uh, disproves this notion. And finally, uh, this is one of the... I've seen a lot of Roman Catholics uh, falsely claim that the Orthodox churches hate converts. That on a personal level, this is absolutely not true, but, you know, anecdotal evidence is not evidence. But the best way to prove this, that this is wrong, is that philatism is a heresy in the Orthodox Church. We don't believe in philatism. We don't divide by ethnicity. So... This is one of the common misunderstandings people have. Greek Orthodox doesn't mean Orthodox Church for Greeks alone, right? There's not going to be a guard in the door checking your ethnicity and say, Oh, sorry, bro, you don't look Greek. I'm not going to let you in the church. That That's not how it works. Greek, The Greek in the Greek Orthodox signifies language, not ethnicity. So anyone of any ethnicity is welcome to the church. That's what the Philistine heresy is dealing with. And orthodoxy historically has tried due to conversation. St. Peter the Alliot, which Roman Catholics try to deny the existence of, interestingly enough, uh, St. Peter the Alliot is a convert and is very highly venerated. Father Seraphim Rose is a beautiful example. He's not even a saint yet, but uh, many Russians, my priest, who is Russian, he himself says, we love Father Seraphim Rose in Russia. And if, if Russians hated converts, then why do they love a American convert monk? Why do they love an American convert monk? Because they don't hate converts. It's as simple as that. It's, it's, just, a, it's just a baseless accusation that Roman Catholics throw against possible converts to orthodoxy to, to keep them in Roman Catholicism. But it's, it's, it's completely um, baseless. So, to summarize this video, uh, number one, are we unable to settle theological disputes? No, we are indeed able to settle theological disputes. Council of even even non-ecumenical councils, we will say that have instances where theological disputes were settled. Again, Council of Black Grenade is, a, is an example of that. Number two, you guys don't have doctrinal unity. Actually, we do have doctrinal unity, and this is expressed through the Eucharist. Now, uh, actually, you are the ones, Roman Catholics are the ones that, that don't have doctrinal unity because you have unions with different theologies and different liturgies and different creeds. Number three, you guys think that the Pope is just another bishop. No, we believe in papal primacy. We just don't believe in papal supremacy. And the Pope, while he did enjoy certain privileges at certain times over the other bishops, that doesn't mean, that doesn't translate into the Pope being the supreme galactic emperor overall, like the Roman Catholic Church currently thinks. Number four, you think that the Son has nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. No, uh, the filioque as a dispute is about hypostatic origin. When it comes to economic procession, we have no problem. The Son eternally manifests the Holy Spirit as the Council of Black Grenade or Saints, such as Gregory Palamas points out. You guys are too mystical and anti-rational. Nope, actually we have many, uh, both mystics, people that are both mystical and rational and philosophical. St. John of Damascus is a clear example of that where he was certainly a very pious, a very quote-unquote mystical man, but at the same time he was a very rational man, right? He didn't shy away from his, using his brain. And finally, number six, you guys hate converts. You guys are nationalist, evil people. No, we don't hate converts. We don't have any problem with converts. We don't have police checking uh, in front of the churches to see if you're Greek or not or if you're Russian or not. Everyone of every ethnicity is welcome to come to the Orthodox Church and witness the beautiful experience of an Orthodox liturgy. Thank you guys for watching this video. God bless you all and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.